Speaking of major telcos, I want to talk a little bit about Mavenir's acquisition of Telestax, which I know is all about, you know, 5G monetization opportunities, um, you know, communication platforms as a service, which we're seeing more and more of those. Um, talk with us a little bit about this. I know you just covered it. Right on. Well, Mavenir's had a busy August here. You know, Absolutely. we've uh, mentioned them at least three times in uh, our conversation here, right. and uh, and that's good. Uh, yes, the Telstax acquisition, I think, is a sound one. Both companies are headquartered in Texas for one, yeah. and Telstax definitely has a pedigree and acumen in the communications platform as a service uh, market right. segment. And uh, what I think uh, is important here is that, yes, yeah, um, Mavenir now can enhance its existing Mavenir Engage platform to improve things uh, like uh, messaging programmability, uh, you know, campaigns, uh, and on and on. Uh, all these capabilities that uh, come with uh, existing uh, CPaaS uh, implementations. And uh, what I think is important here is that obviously Mavenir has 5G and mobile expertise that many of the established uh, communication platform as a service uh, providers don't have inside their portfolio today. And this includes companies like Twilio, uh, Vonage, you know, some of these are, you know, uh, somewhat household names, uh, but also uh, other uh, companies like Bird Message that uh, definitely have made inroads in this market. But what's also important to note here is that you have, you know, players like Microsoft, uh, like AWS, also Cisco, also targeting a space. So Mavenir has its work cut out to d further differentiate um, a, a CPaaS offering here. However, what I think is going to help them is the fact that unlike almost all these other players, they have that in-house 5G uh, portfolio capabilities right. uh, or overall mobile capabilities. And I think that will be a, a kickstart to their ability to leverage the Telestax uh, capabilities to make you know quick inroads in this heavily crowded market. And uh, so this is going to be good you know, for enterprise customers and certainly service providers that are targeting enterprises you know, with their own uh, CPaaS type of implementations, and which is also increasingly overlapping with unified communications as a service and so forth. It's all about, you know, making enterprises smarter when it comes to, you know, platforms like we're using right now, you know, just making communications more flexible, especially, you know, with the work from home right. uh, becoming more uh, mainstream for many major enterprises, right. as well as, you know, other uh, key trends. So this well, is, I you think, know, like something the, that's the good. Whole, the whole BYOD you know, yes. devices, bring your own devices, the work from home. That's not, you know, I mean, I, well, even even as people start going back into the office, when slash if that happens as things are a little dicey right now, but, you know, I believe there's always going to be some kind of a hybrid situation. And so being able to serve that whole, you know, the enterprise work from home employees and the support, the BYOD policies and things like that, I think that's really a big deal here. No doubt. And I think it's also about security. Uh, they yep. also emphasize you know, voice uh, biometrics, yep. uh, certainly interactive voice response uh, capabilities. And and this is, again, aligning with you know enterprises accelerating uh, uh, adoption of 5G and also making service providers more adept at differentiating and monetizing their 5G offerings. So, mm -hmm. yeah, this is uh, something that I think uh, the whole ecosystem uh, will pay attention to. And, you know, will force, you know, some of these established market leaders in that segment to uh, become more uh, advanced in right. how they integrate mobile 5G capabilities with their offerings. Absolutely. Super important.